morning, church. Please join us singing our intro, Blessed Be the Name. Join me with the call to worship. Come and worship. Listen for God's word. Draw near to the source of mercy. All those who are able, please stand for our opening hymn, O Worship the King. remain standing and join me with the unison prayer. There are days, O oh God, when we feel far from your presence. We long for you, yet we feel no response, no closeness. Give us the strength to cry out in pain. Speaking our truth, give us the courage to complain even when there is no response. In the emptiness, we long for your presence. We wait, O oh God, for you. We know that you are the source of all mercy and grace. We trust that you will help us in times of need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
anthem today is Let Us Come to the Table by Karen Maroli. <clears throat> Scripture this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus looked, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. 
And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake for the sake of the good news. Who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age? Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecution, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please pray with me. Gracious God, today is your day. At this very moment, it is all about you and it's not about us. Help us, O God, to worship you with all sincerity and everything that we got. And we ask, O oh God, that you turn your word into a living bread and feed our hungry souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. It's good to be back, church, and thank you for your prayers. And I thank Charles Stenger, one of our lay speakers who preached last Sunday. And we are so blessed to have several lay speakers in our church. Thank you. Let's give him a hand. <clears throat> and that's an affirmation that that was not going to be the last time. Well, thank you, church, for your prayers. We made it. We got back. Uh, we left Sunday, the 27th of September, Sunday afternoon, and we got back last Wednesday, almost midnight. And we got lots of stories to share, but later I will be uh, showing uh, a few pictures and probably I'll ask Leslie as well to say a few words. And yeah, where's Debbie? She's with the kids. Okay. For all, for God, all things are possible. Amen. The scripture reading is not talking about miracles. It is not about miracles, nor about magical events to make things possible. When I say, for God, all things are possible, it is not because God is a magical God, because God is a superpower God, just a wave of hand. There will be plenty of bread. There will be plenty of food for the multitudes. But I would like to take you away from that Disney and magical uh, mentality concerning in, in this scripture passage that Marva just read. It is not about impressing people of doing the extraordinary, but rather it is about realities in life that both rich and poor experience each day. It is about calling us into a deep accountability and the highest call of discipleship. Wow. That sounds scary, right? Say it. Wealth or money is power. But when we allow it to, be, to fill our life to the fullest, it could become a distraction in life. Let me say that again. Wealth or money is power. But when we allow money and wealth to fill our life to the fullest, it could become a distraction in life. 
If you agree, say amen. So the rich young ruler asked Jesus to tell him what he had to do to inherit eternal life. Master, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? This is a question of how we could earn the grace of God. Following all the laws and prohibitions and legalism, laws and prohibitions and perceived traditions, they were not good enough to inherit eternal life. That was an old question by the theologians about the way of salvation or more technical term, soteriology, the way of salvation. How can we be saved? And Jesus asked this young man, well, have you, have you, uh, are you familiar, familiar with the laws of Moses? Oh, yes, Lord. Actually, when I was a child, during my youth days, I know all of them. Yes, you're right. But what you mentioned here that you were doing, that you were okay, was about your relationship with others. It was just when Christ recited the uh, part of the Ten Commandments, Jesus only recited the second half. And this is how Jesus, and what Jesus was trying to say, how about the first half of the first, the first commandment? And it seems like the young rich man was trying to avoid. And just to let, remind all of us of the first commandments, it talks about, Thou shall have no other gods before me. Do not worship any graven images. It's about, say, now, yes, you're good with the second half, but how about the first half? You have come to the point where you worship your money. You worship your wealth, your possessions. And this is how Jesus said it. Say, he said it this way. Go ahead, sell your possessions and sell it to the poor and give it to the poor. And the young man, face down, sad, and left with all sadness because he was not ready and could not do it to release not just wealth or money, the object of his idolatry. In Matthew 6.24, it says, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devo devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This young man was so rich that he cannot just relinquish his loyalty and faithfulness and love of his possessions. And that way, in that regards, it became an object of idolatry. I'm not saying that it is, say, a scene, just like what I shared with the uh, Sunday school class uh, earlier. It is not bad to be rich. It is not a sin to be rich, right? Actually, we pastors, we want to see our people prosper to the brim overflowing why because we look forward that as the lord as the lord blesses you you will also share the blessings to others that you will share the blessings to the church so that the church will be able to continue the ministry of the church ministering to the community and to the least privileged in our community we pray for blessings right it is not a sin to be rich Remember that, Subasa, right? But do not forget, riches, when we allow power and riches and money to be the driving force to fill our life to the fullest, it could become a distraction in our life of which could take us away from God. Secondly, wealth or power, or wealth or money is power, but when it becomes the driving force directing the course of our life, then it must go. The young man could not believe it. Jesus was telling him, 
he was expecting, okay, why not give more to the temple? Why not uh, give extra to the, uh, the, the orphans and to the widows? And Jesus said, okay, sell everything and then give it to the poor. Lord, can I just give a portion of it? Jesus knew everything because this man, this rich man, the wealth became the uh, one factor or force, the force that directing the course of his life. And for Jesus, anything that takes us away from God must go. Anything that drawing us away from God must go. And then Jesus used the illustration on verse 25. It is easier for a camel to go through an, the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Camel was considered the largest animal in the Philistine world. The largest. No elephant. So they used camel as the main uh, way for, to transport goods Cargoes, you know, they, they put all of that, strap everything on camel. And the camel, okay, would obediently obey and carry all of those, those stuff. But when it comes to the city gate, actually there was no uh, um, a, a place uh, around the city, uh, the city wall of Jerusalem that is named Ayubadinil. There was none. There was a Damascus gate. There was a... Uh, uh, David Gates, or there are several Gates name, but there was no eye of the needle. None of those. But Jesus used that illustration because there was a shortcut passage wherein you don't have to go around the city to go through the main gate. There's a secret or, or say a, a shortcut, but the only way to go through that is to unload everything from the, the uh, camel so that the uh, camel will be able to pass through. And then what you need to do is push the rest of the cargoes and then on the other side, then put it back again. And the good thing, the camel would be the happiest animal to experience relief, you know, being relieved of those uh, cargoes even for a few moments. The camel had nothing to do and no connection with all those cargoes, material things, and wealth. Remove it, I'm even fine with that. So it is easier, but and yet for, uh, for people who embrace wealth and money as the driving force, as if we cannot live without it, then this is complicating our relationship in terms of discipleship and following Jesus. You cannot leave that for God, then it must go. John Wesley said, now, how much of my money will I give to God? But that was not the correct answer. How much money, let me say that again. Not, not how much of my money will I give to God, but how much of God's money will I keep? for myself. Let me say that again, make it clear. Jen Wesley said, not how much of my money will I give to God, but how much of God's money I will keep for myself. Wow, it is a, an account of discipleship, a stewardship, all that accountability, what matters the most in life. And lastly, wealth or money is power. But when it drives us away from God and God's community, then it becomes an object of idolatry. John D. Rockefeller said, God gave me my money. I believe the power to make money is a gift from God. To be developed and used to the best of our ability for the good of mankind. Having been endowed with the gifts I possess, I believe it is my duty to make money and steal more money and to use the money I make for the good of my fellow man according to the, to the dictates of my conscience. Wow. Church, 
it is not a sin, it is not bad to have money. It is not a sin to be rich and to have plentiful. But if we think that everything we got is just for ourselves, then we got it. We didn't get the right point what God is telling us. And what also John Wesley is reminding us, how much of God's money will I keep for myself? And how about sharing it, the wealth that God has given me for the community and for the rest of the world? Jutrich Bonhoeffer said from the cause of discipleship, earthly goods are given to be used, not to be collected. Out. Somehow we are all guilty with collecting things, right? And now we call them, we call them dust collectors. In the wilderness, God gave Israel the manna every day. And they had no need to worry about food and drink. Indeed, if they kept any of the manna over until the next day, it went bad. In the same way, the disciple must receive his portion from God every day. If he stores it up as a permanent possession, he spoils it, not only the gift, but himself as well. Or he sets his heart on accumulated wealth and makes it a barrier between himself and God. Where our treasure is, there is our trust and our security our consolation, and our God. Hoarding is idolatry. Church, for people of God, for us, sometimes it seems impossible to give, us, uh, to give up wealth and to give up power. But when we truly understand what is the most important in life, wealth or God, then giving up everything for God is not impossible. That is the meaning for God. Nothing is impossible. It is not about magical things. It is not about miracles. It is about how a person is transformed by the grace of God. In Christ, all things are possible. Lovers of wealth, Money, possessions, and power can still be redeemed and transformed because God's grace through Christ is enough to make us God's own. Let us pray. Gracious God, to some degree, we are guilty just like the rich man. Maybe we do not have millions and millions of money in the bank, Maybe we have a few riches here and there, but so sometimes we are also guilty, oh God, of clinging so much to the wealth, money, possessions, that sometimes our relationship with you, the community, and being a disciple of Christ is being put to the test and jeopardized. So Lord God, we ask that always remind us Possession is a good servant, but not a good, but an evil master. So, Lord God, continue to guide us. Bless us even more so that we may be able to bless others to the fullest. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All who are able, please stand for our hymn of affirmation. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart.
now as you're standing there, turn and wave to people, passing the peace. God's peace to all of you. Okay. You may be seated. All right, thank you. Good to see you, everybody. Okay, um, well, good to be back, and uh, we tomorrow, I understand tomorrow is a federal holiday, right? Columbus Day or Indigenous Day. Um, so t tomorrow, office will be closed for in the observance of the uh, federal holidays, okay? But our, our Monday Bible study will continue on. So we're going to have our Bible study tomorrow since we already got a few sun, uh, Mondays off. So I'll see you tomorrow then. If you need a link, let me know. I'll send you the link. Okay, next. Um, next slide. Okay, uh, the Jigsaw, Jigsaw Puzzle Party next Sunday. This is sponsored by the uh, Christian Education uh, group. So if you're interested, there's a uh, sign up sheets by the uh, welcome table. So uh, go ahead, uh, sign up. So it's going to be for all ages. Okay, well, I would like to share a few of uh, the pictures here and then I will call Leslie afterwards. Okay, we just concluded our journeys of Paul in Turkey and Greece. Okay, next. All right, this is uh, this was our group. We had 11 all together. Others are our interpreters and uh, drivers. Next. Okay, this uh, place actually is, they call it Acropolis. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Acropolis in Pergamum, where the uh, one of the churches in the book of Revelation was uh, mentioned. And so there was a Christian community at the time, during the ancient time. So, okay, well, this was the uh, Pamukkale, and um, uh, uh, they call it also the uh, Sand Castle. I'm sorry, Cotton Castle. It's, it's actually uh, calcium built up, and it's a hot spring. So it's really beautiful. It's like a, a, a terraces of those uh, calcium deposits. It's beautiful. Okay, this was a uh, from the upper uh, section uh, overlooking Ephesus. And Ephesus, again, mentioned also in one of the uh, churches in the book of Revelations. Okay, next. Okay, we are now going through, walking through the streets of Ephesus where we were standing. Uh, it's one of the uh, old temples and the streets where the chariots used to go, you know, every day. All right, next. Uh, again, part of the, uh, in Ephesus, next. Okay, that's very familiar to us. That building behind us used to be a huge library with, in the past, had about 250,000 volumes of uh, um, what, uh, scriptures there or writings. Next. Okay, I mean, this, this one, marks of the Roman Empire is theater or amphitheater. So we've seen many of those, some in bad shapes, ruined, but some are still in uh, operable uh, condition. Next. This one is in Corinthos, or we call it Corinth, just outside Athens. And that place where Apostle Paul, oh, by the way, the previous slide in Ephesus, that's where Apostle Paul wrote his first letter to the Corinthians. And now this one is in Corinthians or Corinthus. Next. Next slide. Okay, this one, we are standing on the Mars Hill, and behind us is the great city of Athens. And we celebrated communion. Uh, it was Sunday morning, so we also celebrated Holy Communion. Next. Now, this one is, uh, and they, they call it the Acropolis, uh, the top where the Parthenon, the buildings, and of course, all in ruins, part of the ancient um, uh, temples. Next. Okay, this one is in Philippi, another trademark of the Roman Empire, the uh, amphitheater. Okay, next. This one is in Thessaloniki, and you know, the, one of the letters of Paul to the Thessalonians, 
Thessaloniki is still a inhabited community. You will see the walls like this one too, the towers. They call it White Tower, but used to be a prison in, in the past. So Thessaloniki, where Apostle Paul also spent some time. Uh, wow. Okay, just a few of the pictures. Next. Uh, but before the prayer, uh, Leslie, would you like would you like to say a, a few words about your experience? Thank you. Good morning, Eshore. Good morning. <laughs> it is good to be back. Thank you for all your prayers, and mm -hmm. uh, we felt your spirit with us. Mm -hmm. The kindness of others is a genuine reflection of kindness of God. To the members of the Board of Trustees East Shore Church and East Shore Church family, I appreciate your thoughtful, generous help for my journeys of Paul in Turkey and Greece trip. It was an amazing journey alongside other Christian believers, seeing the places where Paul traveled preached and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That has increased my faith and understanding of the Bible. Thank you for your loving support. The Lord bless you because you have shown his kindness. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 5. Thank you. God bless you all. Your sister in Christ, Leslie. I felt the Holy Spirit with us as we followed the footsteps of Apostle Paul. We had devotions in Ephesus, Corinth, that were really moving, that just made you feel like you were there, and that made the Bible come alive. The communion at Mars Hill, overlooking the city, in Athens was amazing and very spiritual. And at Philippi also we had devotions. And I am so thankful for all your prayers and thankful for Pastor Armand's leadership and our tour guides and bus drivers and our entire group that we really enjoyed each other, looked out for each other, and we're so thankful of the experience of following Paul's footsteps. Thank you again. Well, to be honest, I'll be lying if I will not admit to you that I did gain a few pounds during the, those trips in Turkey and Greece. Okay, great. Well, to have our prayer time. And by the way, when we visited those places, I offered, we offered prayers for you, most especially for those who requested to pray for them specifically. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I just have a few uh, prayer concerns. Um, this past week, um, I, I, I have said this before that I'm from a uh, Painesville. We had more deaths than you would not believe. So I'm just going to ask for prayers for the Pagan family, the Rhodes family, the Jeffries family, and the Gilbert family. I went to two funerals myself because I just happened to be off last week. But they, uh, I'll say they were home going because so we rejoiced in their life. But Lord, in your mercy. Are there any other concerns or celebrations? I wouldn't mind hearing a celebration. <laughs> okay, God be with you all. Amen. All right. Wonderful. Okay, please pray with me. God of wonders, God of miracles, we thank you, oh God, for all the uh, wonderful things that you have given us. But for those challenging ones, we, will st we still thank you for giving us the strength to overcome them. Lord, 
we thank you for your faithfulness. Even though at times we fall short, many, many times. But Lord God, your grace is always enough to embrace us, to save us from our weaknesses, from our sins. Lord God, we thank you for the life of those who served you in the past. During the time of the ancient times, O oh God, when the early disciples, Apostle Paul and the early disciples, they spread the gospel of Christ all over the place. And here we are, fruits, O oh God, of their faithfulness. Forgive us, O oh Lord, when we at times stop making disciples. We ask that you challenge us once again. We pray, O oh God, for those who are in need of your healing hands. Yes, Lord God, you are the great healer, the great provider, the great doctor. But we also thank you for all the doctors and nurses and the medical people, for those, for the frontliners, taking good care of the sick and those who are in pain and suffering. Continue, O oh God, to use them as channels of your blessings. We also join our brothers and sisters and, and friends who are celebrating special days. Thank you, O oh God, for the wonderful gift of life. Lord, we also thank you that Dali's sister is here with us and her children, Candy and children, they uh, came, moved from the Philippines to Dubai and now to the United States. Thank you, O oh God, for this wonderful opportunity. And we praise you, O oh God, for the joy and life that they will be sharing with us from now on. Lord, we also uh, uh, pray for this church, our young people, our children, our parents who are raising these little ones add more patience, give them more joy and life, O oh God, and love. Lord, we have our personal concerns, our personal issues that we are keeping in our hearts. We offer them before you because we know you can turn our brokenness into a blessing, O oh God. Lord, we pray for the church and community, for this country and the rest of the world. Yes, Lord. Continue to fill this place and the rest of the world. Blanket the world, O oh God, with the love of Christ. All of this we pray in the name of Christ, the one who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen <laughs> be celebrating Worldwide Communion Sunday. Actually, last Sunday was the Worldwide Communion Sunday, where the rest of the world, the Christian community, celebrated the Holy Communion. You may follow along through the screens. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Together, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. 
We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. And now we will hear that dedication in different languages. This is in French. Le corps du Christ donné pour vous. The body of Christ given for you. Le sang du Christ donné pour vous, the blood of Christ given for you. Christ, what I hear it. I got good admire. In a blood, I would admire to you. This is the blood of Jesus Christ given to you. This is in Tagalog. Ang katawan ni Kristo ipinagloob ipinagkaloob sa inyo. The body of Christ given to you. Ang dugo ni Kristo ipinagkaloob sa inyo. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. I will I will say it in Spanish. El cuerpo de Cristo integrado por vosotros. The body of Christ given for you. La sangre de Cristo integrado por vosotros. The blood of Christ given for you. 
this is in my dialect, Cameroon country. Nyori Yesu Christo, Biahua, the body of Christ given to you. Mukumi Yesu Christo, Biahua, the blood of Christ given to you. This is the Japanese. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Take and drink in remembrance of Him, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Let us pray. Thank you, O God, that we can celebrate the Holy Communion as children of God, children of the world. Thank you, O God, for saving us, redeeming us from our wickedness, our unrighteousness. But thank you for calling us your children. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, at this time, let us continue to worship God through our offerings. Ushers, please come forward. Let us pray. Lord, truly we are blessed beyond measures. You have given us your favor in so many ways, in so many times. Receive, O God, the offering of your people, fruit of their labor. And I pray that you continue to shower your blessings upon your people so that they may also share the blessings to many. Bless this offering and use them for the ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. People of God, go in peace. And now may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, shall keep our hearts and our minds in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Excuse me.
them. We'll have a picture.